morning to you and uh, welcome back. Mangal Bamkun is about to join us now. Of course, uh, due to that story, we understand Tutu Goshaba is headed to court to hear his fate. And we've been hearing from uh, Sarofat Zopule's family earlier on. And they've been preparing for prayer, Mangoba. Uh, just coming back to you, I mean, where do you stand right now? Have you made your way yet to court? Are you still with the family? Well, Tumelo is still here uh, in uh, Midlands, uh, Zone 3, uh, the home of Tsekhovatopoul, of course. So this is where the family has just held a prayer this morning, asking for divine intervention, asking uh, that, uh, you know, they will finally find closure and justice from the court today. And uh, uh, joining me now is the uncle of Tsekhovatopoul, just uh, uh, to speak to us about how they are today as a family as well. It's been a long journey to Misang. I know that you've been at it since day one. Uh, how are you feeling today? Look, Ijo uh, is a bag of mixed emotions. But to describe it, we are anxious and nervous at the same time because uh, you'll never know what you expect. But I can safely say to you that we expect nothing less than a conviction. Uh, so as a family, we, we will fight until the end. And... Um, we also would like to take this opportunity to thank the public for supporting us, uh, including the global citizens uh, from as far as US, UK. So we, we really appreciate their support. It's not been an easy journey for you as a family. How has the two, uh, past two years been for you? It's been taxing, psychologically and emotionally, especially the Shoba matter. It, it actually stretched us to the point that we never anticipated. So it, it's been really taxing to us. Yeah. And in terms of uh, Tumisang, I mean, uh, today is judgment and the family is a step closer to justice. Uh, do you think that uh, you're well uh, within that uh, process of finding uh, justice and closure? I think we are. I would love to believe that we, we are a step closer. Uh, if you take into consideration the way the NPA had presented its case uh, in preparations leading up to uh, when they had to start with their case in court, uh, it was excellent. I think the highlight of the case for me was the cell phone mapping where two, three experts actually came and testified about the cell phone, trying to link uh, Mr. Shoba with the disputed number. So had it not been for that, I, I, I would tell you a different story. And I remember we were here with you during the funeral when you spoke during the funeral that uh, you yourself, as a practicing lawyer, this case has had quite a huge impact on the way you're going to be working going forward. And I still stand by what I said during the funeral. I wasn't talking because I was emotional. I am still saying, no matter the criticisms that may be leveled against me, I don't see myself doing such a case. Yeah. Okay, thank you for speaking to us. I do know that you're in a rush to go to court now. Proceedings are expected to start at 10 o'clock. But of course, there are also some uh, of those uh, who have come here to support the family. There is the Kumu Etsile Foundation that is accompanying the family. Uh, Gender-based activists are also out, as well as uh, the Tseko Fatsopule Foundation. And joining me now is uh, Butlale Modisale. Butlale, how are you feeling as a foundation? It's uh, finally D-Day for Shoba. Well, this is actually one of um, the biggest highlights. Remember that we were birthed when, um, uh, you know, through this tragedy as a foundation. And um, uh, so this, um, I, can I can safely say I feel it in my, in my bone that um, we are headed for a conquest. And for us, um, uh, it's one hell of a way to begin um, our journey with, you know, that we're going to, um, um, to finally get what we've been fighting for and this just absolutely boosts our confidence and um, what we stand for especially in terms of all the other cases that we're busy with, um, that we're busy with outside um, uh, the one that uh, you know that birthed this this foundation and it's all about legacy I mean that's the important thing when it comes to the foundation but uh, going forward what do you think that uh, should be done to address this issue of gender-based violence? Do you think that uh, perhaps the law is enough uh, in terms of dealing with this scourge? Um, uh, honestly, law is far from, from enough and uh, a lot is still yet to be, to be adjusted and, uh, and to be done. 
um, uh, we still get so many um, so many cases that are still being failed to date. And um, as you know, I, I can um, I don't know if we're lucky enough that this case happens to be um, in the public eye, and maybe perhaps that's why it's getting such um, um, excellence, you know, in terms of um, uh, how it's being handled and serviced. But um, with other cases that we're handling, we find ourselves having to um, accompany. Um, our um, stakeholders to be able to open cases because they've been refused to open cases. Mm -hmm. we, we, we still have, um, uh, you know, the struggles of dockets being lost and, um, and people still not being apprehended because of Jojo. We still find ourselves in a position where um, the perpetrator is, being arrest, uh, is not being arrested and the victims are arrested, you know. And, um, uh, you know, it's, still, it's so funny how um, people that are not in the wrong are always, you know, um, the ones that are easy to be handled by the police and not the perpetrators. So we're still far from it. Okay, thank you very much for speaking to us, Butaliam Odisele, speaking on behalf of the Tsekhofatopoulo Foundation. While the family is now making its way to court where that judgment will be delivered at 10 o'clock this morning. All right, Mangobam Kuni, thank you for that, and we'll be sure to come back to you as and when it occurs.